What's the 55 penguins? The 2013 number one on experimental design, chi square, and fruit flies. In an investigation of fruit fly behavior, a covered choice chamber is used to test whether the spatial distribution of flies affected by the presence of a substance placed at one end of the chamber. To test flies' preference for glucose, 60 flies, are 60 flies are introduced to the middle of the choice chamber at the insertion point indicated by the arrow in the figure above. A cotton ball soaked with 10% glucose solutions placed at one end of the chamber and a cotton ball with no solutions placed at the other end. The position of flies are observed and recorded every minute for 10 minutes. A asks us to predict the distribution of flies in the chamber for 10 minutes and justify that prediction. So when I think to myself, I say, okay, well, flies, they're going to be drawn to food and sugar is a type of food. Specifically, a fruit fly is going to want to go to sugar. So I will predict that the fruit flies will be found in the glucose soaked cotton chamber um, because of the fact that they're going to be drawn by the scent because they believe that it is food in that chamber. And so they'll be drawn to that food. And so here they're giving you a point for predicting the location and then for justifying that prediction. So it seems that as long as you made a prediction, you got a point here. And as long as you justified that prediction appropriately, you got that point. Now, this is a really old exam question. And now the predictions, you know, have to be actually sound. Um, but if they ever ask you to predict, go ahead and make a prediction. Increase, decrease, stay the same, this chamber, that chamber, just make a prediction. Give it a guess. Um, anything that goes wrong, you just don't get that point. But if you left it blank, you also wouldn't get that point. So go ahead and try these. So the student said the flies will be distrib distributed so that there would be more flies in the chamber with the glucose of cotton ball because glucose is an energy so source for fruit flies and will therefore attract and maintain increased numbers of fruit flies. Part B asks us to propose one specific improvement to each of the following parts of the experimental design and explain how that modification will affect the experiment. So experimental control. Our control was the dry cotton ball and the experimental treatment was the wet glucose cotton ball. So I don't know whether the fly is drawn to the glucose or if it's being drawn to the water. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a cotton ball that has water on it so that I can determine that it was the glucose that is attracting the fruit fly, not the moisture. Experimental, I'm sorry, env environmental factors has to do with something in the environment, temperature, um, spatial awareness, like the space of the chambers, um, the, the, the light availability, the time, all of those are possible changes you can make. The difference of concentration of glucose. Um, so if you change any of those, that's going to attribute, again, the movement to glucose preference, not to one of these other um, components about the environment. So a student said, to improve the experimental control, soak the cotton ball in pure water to eliminate moisture content as a variable, making the experimental results due strictly to glucose, not water or glucose. This will not affect the fruit fly behavior and movement if glucose is the luring factor, but it will make the fly numbers more equitable if water is a luring factor. Increase in temperature throughout the entire system or testing at different temperatures could impact the data because flies are more active at higher temperatures. As ectotherms, their metabolic rate so the respiration is impacted greatly by temperature. So temperature near to their ideal body temperature would increase cellular respiration and the need for glucose. So more flies would be found in the glucose containing chamber. So part C says the experiment described above is repeated with ripe bananas at one end and unripe bananas at the other end. Once again, the positions of the flies are observed and recorded every 10 minutes, every minute for 10 minutes. The position of flies at one minute and 10 minutes are shown in the table below. They then ask us to perform a chi-score test on the data for that 10-minute period and specify the null hypothesis that we're testing and enter the values into our table. So there, this is thing called chi-5 that was made by Jay Daly, and it's to help us make sure we have the five parts of chi-square. So since we were talking about chi-square, I figured we should go over those five things, and so I'm going to explain chi-square with those five things included. So first, we'll talk about null hypothesis. We'll calculate our chi-square value. We'll find our degrees of freedom, our critical value, and then we'll come up with our conclusion, which will be rejecting or failing to reject that null. So looking here, our null hypothesis is always talking about our independent variable has no effect on dependent variable. Now, that is a very broad statement. When you write your null hypothesis, you need to be specific about the experiment, what experiment we're doing. Okay. So I'm going to say the presence of banana, ripe or unripe, has no effect on the fruit fly position. That's telling me that every single chamber is gonna have an equal number of fruit flies because that banana had no effect on the fruit fly uh, positions. Um, and so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate my chi-square value. 
Um, and so I'm going to use this given chart, my observed, my expected, and then my whole calculation to figure out what the chi-square value is going to be for this. Now, I use this other chart that I teach my students, and I'm going to get into that one in just a second. But let's fill in this chart. If I look up here, I see that at 10 minutes, I had 45 in ripe, 3 in middle, and then 12 in the unripe. So I fill those in. That gives me a total of 60 flies. Since I expect there to be equal quantities in each of the three positions, I do 60 divided by 3, and that gives me 20. So I put 20 in each of those chambers. And then I just fill it in the map. So I put my observe, my thought I expected, I square it, and then I put it over my expected. Um, and that would give me my chi-square value. Now, as I said, I use this other chart where I have my treatment or my variable or whatever the, th the different options are. I put them under treatment. I say what my different observed were. I then put my expected. I do my observed minus expected. Then I square it. And then I divide by my expected. Um, and so if I go ahead and use this chart to fill in and do my, ca my calculations, I have my 45, my 3, my 12, my 20, 20, 20. I then have 45 minus 20, which gives me 25. That squared gives me 625 divided by 20, gives me 31.25. 6 minus 20 gives me negative 17 squared, gives me 289 divided by 20, gives me 14.45. 12 minus 20 gives me negative 8 squared, gives me 64 divided by 20, gives me 3.2. And if I add all those together, I get 48.9. Whoa, that's a big chi-square number. So here is what was on the actual scoring guidelines. The flies will be evenly distributed across the three different parts of the choice chamber. Um, you see our expected being 20, 20, 20, and then you can see that calculation. Um, students were also able to get their expected point, even if they didn't have their null correct, as long as the expected matched whatever they had in their null hypothesis. So students said the number of flies in the chamber with the ripe banana will be equal to the number of flies in the chamber with the unripe banana and equal to the number of flies in the middle. And they also got points for having 20, 20, 20 down there. They actually didn't care about the calculation. And so if you notice, the student actually messed this up here. They put 12 for the ripe banana and 45 for the unripe banana when those two should have actually been flipped. Um, so their calculation in terms of the chart were actually incorrect, but that's okay. Um, so I now need to figure out my degrees of freedom. So my degrees of freedom is the number of different options I have coming out minus one. So since I have end of ripe banana, middle, and then end with unripe banana, that gives me three. Three minus one gives me two. So my degree of freedom is going to be two here. I then want to figure out what my critical value is. So I look at two, and then I say, okay, well, my p-value is 0 0.05. So that tells me that's 5.99. So degree of freedom of two, p-value of 0 0.05, and that gives me 5.99. Um, the other day, a student was a little confused on this. This is telling me that there's a 95% confidence interval. And if I did 0 0.01, that's giving me a 99% confidence in terms of this. OK, um, and so now I figure out, am I going to reject or fail to reject my data? OK, so in terms of reject or fail to reject, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare that value. So 5.99 to 48.9. And I can see that that's actually less. So my calculated value is greater than my table value. So that tells me that I'm going to reject my null hypothesis because of the fact that there is something else at play. And I do not find there to be equal concentration or equal numbers of my flies in each of the regions. Um, and so for this point, you had to have everything. You had to give me a degree of freedom. You had to tell me your p-value. You had to tell me that calculated statistic and how it compared to the critical value. And you had to tell me whether the null hypothesis was rejected. Um, so since there are three possible outcomes, there are two degrees of freedom using a p-value of 0 0.05. The maximum chi-square that would fail to reject the null hypothesis is 5.99. In this experiment, the chi-square value equals 48.9, which is greater than 5.99. As a result, the null hypothesis can be rejected in favor of the alternate hypothesis that the glucose does have an effect on the fruit fly behavior. Part C is to briefly propose a model that describes how the environmental cues affect the behavior of the flies in the choice chamber. So in this one, you had to give me some type of stimulus with some type of response, or you had to talk about the input um, type of integration taking place in the brain and then an output. OK, so a student said the fruit flies, if they lack the ability to smell the glucose from the insertion point, they will move about randomly. Once they encounter the glucose, they will recognize it as a food source and will remain by it for a longer period of time. When the flies sense the glucose, they move towards it by chemotaxis rather than moving about randomly by kinesis. Other cues like increased moisture content or increased temperature would have similar impacts on fly behavior. So our stimulus was the glucose and the response was the chemotaxis. Hope that was helpful. Remember, if that pain was just success by all.